we will remember the solution of a discrete dynamical system in terms of the eigenvectors. There was some sort of conservation of misery there. Yes, we did have the solution explicitly, which is nice of course, but it was a bit tricky to see the behavior. We can do something very similar for differential equations. Let us write down the solution in terms of the eigenvectors in this video. Suppose we have a differential equation x prime equals ax, where the initial state x0 equals v, where v is an eigenvector of a, so a times v equals lambda of v. In that case, we can write down the solution explicitly in quite an easy form. Because how does it look? Let's try a solution <coughs> x of t equals v times e to the power lambda t. So what happens if we compute x prime? Well, x prime is the ddt of x. However, v is an eigenvector, it's a constant vector, it does not depend on t, so it can be taken out of differentiation. And we have just e to the power lambda t left to differentiate. Well, that's straightforward, you get lambda times e to the power lambda t, so we get lambda v e to the power lambda t equals lambda times x. So x prime equals lambda x. And if you compute a times x, we get a times x, v e to the power lambda t. Now the e to the power lambda t is just a scalar. It can be taken out. It can be taken in front of the matrix A. So we get a e to the power lambda t times a times v. However, we know a times v equals lambda times v. So we get a lambda e to the power lambda t times v equals lambda, and here we have our x again. So what do we see? x prime equals lambda x, a times x equals lambda times x. In other words, x prime equals a times x. So this x is a solution of the differential equation x prime equals a times x, and check t equals zero gives the correct initial condition. So if you would have an initial condition of an eigenvector, then the solution looks really nice. It's just x of t equals v times e to the power lambda t. But what can we do for some general initial condition? Uh, of course, not always that lucky. Well, what, what can we do? We can express the initial condition in terms of all the eigenvectors, c1 times v1 up to cn times vn. And then we have a linear problem, so we have superposition. So the, uh, uh, the, the total solution is the sum of solutions with C1, V1 as initial condition up to Cn, Vn as initial condition. But if I have C1 times V1 as initial condition, I know the solution. It's C1 times V1 e to the power lambda 1 t. Just like here, with the V1 and e to the power lambda 1 t. And then I have all the others, which I have to add due to superposition. So here we have our solution explicitly, which is nice because we have our solution, but still it is a very lengthy expression, of course. So let's see an explicit example how this works. So we have our A from our mass spring system, 0, 1, minus 4, minus 5. We know how to diagonalize A. A equals P, D, P inverse is P and D given. You have already checked that in the previous video. And suppose now I have an initial condition 1, 1. So how can I find the solution here explicitly? I have to express 1, 1 in terms of the eigenvectors 1, minus 1 and 1, 0. So I write 1, 1 equals C1, 1, minus 1 plus C2 times 1, 0. And I have to find C1 and C2. Well, you can do row reduction, or you can use an inverse matrix, or you can just think about it first. Look at the second component, there's only a C1, so you know C1 equals minus 1. And then we have here a minus 1 plus C2 equals 1, so C2 equals 2. So you have the solution straight away. And then you can write down the solution like this, with only two terms now. 
x of t equals c1 times v1 times e to the power minus t, lambda 1, plus c2, 2 times v2 times e to the power lambda 2t. So here you have the solution explicitly. Of course, it's nice to have an explicit solution, but it's even nicer if you also draw the phase space. Fortunately, you have learned that already, so you can do both now.